most of my videos are a pretty strong nudge to retire sooner rather than later. But you know what? Early retirement isn't for everybody. In fact, retirement isn't for everybody. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about seven reasons to not retire early and maybe even never retire. Let's go for a walk and talk about it. And I, I, I think the number one reason to never retire or to postpone retirement is if you really love what you're doing for work. And I think the classic example of that is Warren Buffett. I mean, here's a gentleman that, as I record this, is 92 years old. And he's not just any normal 92 year old. He is one of the richest men in the world. So if there's ever been a poster child of not needing to work, it would be Warren Buffett. But here he is at 92 years old and Charlie Munger, even older than him, his business partner. Uh, and both of them still love going into work. And, and I think that's a wonderful thing, right? If you're skipping to work every day, if you truly love what you do, it's a great reason to postpone or maybe even never retire, right? But I want you to stay to the end of this video because I have some very, very important cautions uh, that I wanna share with you. Even if, if you're delighted to go to work, you can't wait for a Monday morning. Even in those situations, there's some important cautions that as 20 years as a fee-only financial advisor, I've seen people to look back and regret and I don't want that to happen to you. Okay, so that's number one, you love your job. Okay, now let's talk about number two. Number two is if you have a lot of flexibility, right? If you get to do all of the fun things that you want to do, you get to work on what you want, when you want, from where you want, uh, and importantly, with whom you want, you know, that's a lot. And if you've got all of those factors in your favor, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. So if you have that flexibility, in many ways, even though you're working, you might feel like, you know what, actually, I don't feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm retired. I feel like I'm doing what I enjoy doing. Okay, number three is social. You know, a lot of us have our friend circle um, at work. And if, if you have friends at work, if you really uh, enjoy socializing with those people, um, and, and you're friends with them and you enjoy their company, they're smart people, they understand you, they get you, uh, and they let you be you. Um, and, and, you know, you just, you feel like you're part of a team. You know, unfortunately, very few Americans get, get to have that situation. In fact, you know, studies show that um, if, you, if you study people and say, put your name on the study, three-fourths of the people are going to say that they love their job, right? If the employer asks, you know, what's your satisfaction with work? Three-fourths of those people are either going to say, you know, I'm happy or I'm extremely happy or whatever the top two categories are. But if you take that same survey anonymously, I think we can all guess what the results are going to be. 80% of people say that they don't love their work. So if, if and a lot of that has to do with you know, your supervisor, who you're working with and um, who your teammates are. So if you have those boxes checked, there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, so that's number three, social. Number four is just staying sharp. You know, um, um, society is, is showing us that more and more the cognitive decline that people experience, both in retirement and sadly sometimes before retirement, right, is is becoming, incre the, the awareness of it at least, is becoming in increasingly great, right? We all know stories, unfortunately, of, of people that have, have, have lost their cognitive skills or starting on decline. And one of the things that the studies show is, you know, staying intellectually sharp, being uh, challenged regularly uh, is a good thing. You know, they say like doing jigsaw puzzles, learning a new language, but you know what? One of the nice things about work is it does challenge us, many of us, intellectually. So if that's you, you know what? That's that's a huge uh, that's a, a huge benefit. And, and you know, people pay money to be cognitively challenged. Um, you know, different apps uh, to to keep sharp. Uh, and if you're getting paid to do that and you're staying cognitively sharp, good good for you. Okay, number five uh, is money. You know. 
one of the nice things about working is we get paid to work. Uh, and if you're making good money, uh, and because of that, you don't have to take out money uh, in your 60s, in your 70s, right? Uh, regular viewers of my channel know I talk about something called the sustainable withdrawal rate. That's famously known as the 4% rule developed by uh, Bill Bengen. Uh, and, and, you know, a four, there's smart people that are saying, you know what, the 4% rule no longer applies. Maybe you're at risk if you take out 4% a year. I'm, I'm not in that camp, but there's smart people that are. Um, but you know what's a safer withdrawal rate than 4%? Than 0% or really a, a negative number, right? If you're putting money into your retirement account. So money is number five. You know, you're making good money and you don't have to take money out of your retirement account. Um, that's, that's a big, that's a big uh, plus. And even if you are taking money out uh, because you want to start spending more money, and if you're in that situation, I'd really encourage you to work with a fee-only financial planner to see, you know, how much, maybe you should not be saving money. In fact, I, I would guess if you're in that situation, I don't know your situation, but likely you should not be saving money and, and you should be going out and having fun and taking more expensive vacations and trips and doing the things that you enjoy doing. Okay, number six is if you continue working, you know, again, it's related to money. You have money to support causes that you care about. Um, before I moved to where I live now, uh, I went to a, a local church down the street and there was a business executive um, that viewed his mission in life. He was older, he was probably in his late 60s, early 70s, but literally 100% of what he made, he donated to the church to support these causes um, that he wanted to support, but it just wasn't his thing to go overseas and you know, to, to, to dig a well or to help build a house. Uh, and so he did what he could. He supported it financially. Uh, and number seven, and remember, stay to the end because I'm gonna talk about an important caveat and caution because unfortunately, sometimes people talk themselves into this route and then they have regrets. So stick with me. Number seven is, uh, number six was supporting causes. Number seven is supporting people that you love and care about, right? Think about how hard it was for you to save uh, for the down payment for your first house or, you know, save your first $100,000. Now that was probably a while ago, um, but you can probably help adult children and other people that you care about make their journey a little bit easier and a little more interesting for them. So, so that's a powerful thing that you might be able to help them with doing. Okay, now onto the caveat and the warning with this. The first one is if you're married, make sure that your spouse is on board with this game plan because oftentimes married couples will say, you know, what well, we're sacrificing today for a brighter and a more enjoyable and a more secure tomorrow, right? Um, and, and now tomorrow has come. This is your time if you're watching videos like this or it's, it's soon hopefully gonna be your time. And if you're deciding that, you know what, you're gonna change the game plan make sure you loop in your spouse because the last thing you'd want to do is to have a health issue. And oftentimes your spouse is the caregiver. And if your spouse wasn't on board with this and, and they're upset that they didn't get to live their retirement life um, because their spouse didn't, didn't retire or change the game plan uh, in, the, in the last inning of the game, um, that can be a challenge, right? There can be bitterness and you certainly don't want that in your marriage and you certainly don't want it with your caregiver. So just make sure that the other important people in your life are on board with it. And the other thing is remember at 60 years old, you have less than likely on average, less than a thousand weeks remaining of healthy active time. Now I opened the video with Warren Buffett, right? Warren Buffett's 92, um, he's still skipping to work every day it looks like he played the game pretty well, doesn't it? But it could have gone the other way. I don't know Warren's health. I hope he's in spectacular health. Um, but if he had had a stroke or a heart attack or a cancer diagnosis, and all of a sudden, let's say that that had happened at 62, I think there's a good chance he would look back and say, I had all the money in the world. And literally, and 
I didn't, I didn't retire. I didn't take a couple years and, and spend more time with, I don't know Warren's family situation, with grandkids or people that he loved. Um, and, and, and maybe doing some of the traveling. I'm sure Warren's very well traveled, but you don't want to live with regret. So I want you to, to, to work out how you're going to spend that thousand weeks in a very thoughtful and deliberate way. And I also want you to think about watching this video here where I talk about five reasons to retire as soon as you can. And I'm sorry, this one's the income for retirees. And this one's the video for five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.